Hey, this is Blue Dolphin coming back at you with another Hack the Box Sherlock investigation. This one's Meerkat. Let's get into it. Okay, so just jumping right into things here, I'm gonna start at a high level and go through an attacker's workflow as to what I think happened. Then I'm gonna quickly go through each question and show you how I solved it and what I used. I'm gonna try and keep this video fairly quick. So as far as the workflow goes, what I noticed is I think there was some initial port scanning happening where we saw a large volume of packets. This included primarily three types, SYN packets, REST technology, and then SYN and uh, congestion related packets. So the SYN flood I felt was likely port scanning because quite often you're port scanning, you're just sending out SYN packets and seeing where you get an ACK, like the response, the three way handshake, SYN, ACK, SYN. And in this instance, there are many SYN packets hitting different ports. There are also many retransmissions of the REST ACK package, packet, which means a port was probably filtered or closed. And that's the response uh, in many cases when you're port scanning and a port's not open. Thirdly, I noticed these congestion package or packets, which are the SYN, ECE, CWE. So I don't know a whole lot about this, but I think this is just a congestion notification um, where when you're sending a packet, you can see if a network is congestion aware. It's one of the available flags with the packet. And if it is, it will, instead of dropping the packet, route it differently to help manage, I think like DDoS attacks or large volumes. All right, after the port scanning, I noticed that there were some HTTP requests. There were get requests and post requests to Bonita. And in this instance, what was really interesting is there were some post requests to the login service where we observed credential stuffing. Following this, I noticed that there was an IOC. And the reason I noticed there was an IOC is A, there was a payload, it was like I18 and translation, it was right here. And if you Google that, you'd find out if it, it's the CVE or you could just use um, Dynamite Lab, a packet analysis, free tool I'm gonna show later. And that taught me there's a CVE going on where I was then able to dive in a little more and realize there was command injection happening. The commands that were run were who am I, cat Etsy password, and then ultimately a WCAT command to paste bin to download a bash script, which would then make a curl command to um, another paste bin site where it would download an SSH key. And yeah, so let's just start jumping into each question here. That was the workflow, which you can see all right here. Question number one. So we believe our business management platform server has been compromised. Can you confirm the name of the application? All right, so here you can see on the Dynamite Lab, which is a free online packet analysis tool. And you can see here it has identified a Bonita Soft authorization bypass. Um, you could also find this information if you look in Wireshark through the post request, which let me bring up here. So again, right here, you're gonna see post request to Benita login service, HTTP 1.1. Um, yeah, so that's that. Let's jump over to the next question now. The next one is, we believe the attacker may have used a subset of the brute forcing attack category. What is the name of the attack carried out? Well, this was just obvious to me that it was gonna be credential stuffing. However, if we look at the Wireshark capture, which let me pull it up. I have the wire capture here. And what we can do is we can see there's an attempt here but the easiest way is just to actually filter by protocol. And you'll see pretty quickly that we have all these usernames coming in hot right here. So you could you could put one of these keys in the, the columns. So you could just read them at a high level, but we do have all those happening here. All right, jumping over to question three here, you can see, does the vulnerability exploited have a CVE assigned? And if so, which one? Yes. So again, we saw that over in our Dynamite Lab, which I'm just bringing over. You can see it here again. This is the CVE. Granted, there was another one um, down here. However, I believe they're the same and the top one just tripped more often um, and under an, a different alert amount. I don't actually know the difference. However, you can see it there as well. If you're looking at the Wireshark capture, another way to figure out the CVE was to, let me bring it up, actually take the IOC, the indicator of compromise, which was this string right here, where it says I or I L eight and translation, and you could pop this in, and you'd quickly learn that this is actually a CVE, and you'd learn a little more about that CVE. And I just want to talk about that very briefly. Let me just bring over a sc the screen here related to the CVE, so we can learn just quickly a little about it uh, within sixty seconds. So at a high level, what's happening is the technical vulnerability is there is an exclusion here. So there's a filter. So before the request, so sorry, the request hits the server, then it gets routed. But before it gets routed, there's a filter and that filter says, hey, if you have an excluded pattern, such as this one here, IL8 translation, then what happens is this gets filtered successfully to the backend. And these filters apply to two things, a authorization token and a REST API.
token and the exploit um, does rely on the API, which we can see in the post request. And that's why this works is because in the back end they have this exclusion and it's being taken advantage of. So getting that out of the way, let's jump back over to the next question, which is which string was appended to the API URL? Well, we already answered that. That's gonna be this string here that we just talked about. Moving over to task five, how many combinations of usernames and passwords were used in the credential stuffing attack? Uh, this one can be a, a, a bit of a pain, but how I did it is I just pulled up all the HTTP requests, looked at all of them, and then I counted them all up and I eliminated the ones that were successful. And I eliminated every sec, every uh, 401, every second post was the same credential. It was just the install, install username. And I just got rid of all of those. So you can see that here, username, install, password, install. I got rid of all of those and you were left with 100, I think it was 112 um, combinations. So I just cut that in half, 56, that was my answer. Then as far as which username and password combination was successful, let me just pull that up. Actually, we'll just find it together. Looking through here, you can see that like obviously a 401, that's gonna be a page on responsive. So we're looking for like a 200 to a 204, which of course is at the very end, but I believe it's also, we can find it earlier, right here, I think. Yeah, right here. So you can see here, info, HTTP, uh, 204 response and the HTTP, or sorry, the, the, the application form sent was right here with uh, this username, Seb Broom, password, government. All right, let's jump back over to the next question. So if any, which text sharing site did the attacker utilize? Well, let me show you. So again, we can actually see that as we go through the HTTP requests, we're going to see this vulnerability being taken advantage of and commands being passed. So we can see one command right here where it says, who am I? I'm gonna scroll all the way down and we're gonna see right here, the pace attempt. Do we see this? This is a command. So this is the vulnerability and there's a w get command being passed um, to get the resource. So let's jump over and take a look at that resource. I'm just gonna bring it over on the page here. You can see here, it is a bash script copying this file. The file name is hff gra 4 unv and it's over and it's appending it to the authorized key folder. So if we actually copy this key here, because again, this is a script, it's going to get downloaded on the host and then it's gonna run sudo service ssh restart and before it does that, though, it's going to download this key and pop it in the authorized key file, which is a SSH key. We can see that here. So that's going to be our answer. Paste.io. We also know the file name. We just had a look at it. It was, there it is. The next question is, can you confirm the file modified by the attacker to gain persistence? We just had a look at that. Last question. Can you confirm the MITRE technique ID? We sure can. I'm just pulling it up here. This is the MITRE attack ID T1098 account manipulation sub technique ID dot zero zero four SSH authorized keys. That's it. See everyone in the next video.